In the Transformative Leadership and Spiritual Development course, students and fellows of diverse disciplines and backgrounds from across Harvard University explore the spiritual dimensions of transformative leadership and ways to cultivate their capacities to advance sustainable peace. They share wisdom and practices from their spiritual and cultural traditions and life experiences. They also learn from distinguished faculty, peace practitioners, and religious leaders who serve as mentors and offer skill-building workshops. Throughout the program, they cultivate friendships as spiritual companions who can offer advice, support, and inspiration to one another in their future work in varied fields and settings around the globe. come from India. I'm an architect enrolled at the Graduate School of Design, Energy and Environments program. Through life experiences, I've come to realize that biases that people might have are not really their own, because to be truly human is to be divine. So with these interests and experiences in mind, when I came across uh, the email for this program, which spoke about cultivating your capacity as a peace builder in the form of a weekly dinner in the company of diverse peers. I thought that's something I'd like to be a part of. My name is Christina and I'm at the School of Education at Harvard and my concentration is in technology, innovation and education. And before coming to uh, this program, I was living in New York, uh, but I think I consider Texas my home. When I was younger, my father um, went away uh, or served in Desert Storm and I think had a lot of um, challenges that he experienced around uh, being in the military and, uh, and I watched how those challenges came into our house and how it was hard for uh, us as a family to figure out how to deal with those experiences in the house. And, I think that it was really um, my parents' spiritual practice that, uh, that rooted their ability to, um, or that allowed them to ground their marriage in spite of those challenges. So I think that that long experience, which lasted and I think continues to unfold, was a big defining factor in my wanting to learn more about how uh, spirituality and religion could be used as a tool for overcoming conflict. I'm Jenna and I'm a student at Harvard Divinity School. I'll be starting my second year. I'm from Idaho. My spiritual tradition is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or the Mormon faith community. In light of my life experiences and academic interests, I was drawn to this series because I love to learn about people and connect with them. And I feel that it's really important in all of my work to know where other people are coming from and what they feel about things and how they see the world. If we don't have mutual understanding, I feel that things can't really move forward in the way that they should. My name is Kristen Lovett. Um, my school is Harvard Divinity School. Um, I'm from North Carolina. And my spiritual tradition, is, it's many, um, but I take from Jewish tradition, um, Messianic Judaism, Christianity, and Buddhism. My life experience um, of being a humanitarian aid worker, oftentimes when you work in areas of conflict, people are looking for leadership, but spirituality is, is connected to it. Um, spirituality, religion, religion, religious institutions, they aren't the only consideration, but it is within the context. And so um, I decided that no, this course definitely speaks to the things that I long to, to talk about, and so that's why I decided to, to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. I was born in Bangladesh. I grew up in Sri Lanka. Here at Harvard Divinity School, I am a candidate for the Master of Theological Studies program, and I am a Buddhist, a Buddhist monk. 
I'm a first year MDiv candidate at Harvard Divinity School. I'm studying Buddhist ministry. I'm a Tibetan uh, from India. And I'm a Buddhist. When I heard about this series, I thought this would be a great platform um, to meet uh, students and mentors who are themselves either leaders in their field or aspiring leaders in their fields. Um, learn from them and um, from their individual experiences and wisdom and in a way build my uh, skill sets. One of the aspects of the spiritual formation and transformative series that I found very beneficial is the personal sharing aspect of it. People to bring personal stories, stories that inspire them, stories that motivate whatever they do, stories that have to do with the way that they see the world, and personal experiences from their classrooms, from their professional lives. That, that really was really inspiring to me. I think uh, one particular moment that stands out for me is in my small group, uh, we had a conversation one day about um, what love was. And there are, I think, four or five of us uh, sitting in a circle in one of the rooms in the Divinity School. And we went around, and everybody shared something completely different. So one person talked about what love, how love was self-love. Somebody else talked about how love was um, a type of friendship. Uh, somebody else talked about intergenerational friendships and love that you cultivate with people who are both younger and older than you, um, and how meaningful that, that is. Um, and then somebody else talked about love and religion. And that kind of conversation is is, I think, an incredibly rare one that either doesn't happen or when it happens takes a particular tone and cadence that isn't as open or as diverse or as flexible. And so I think that's a moment that really stands out that captures what you get when you bring people together and say, you can be who you are and let's see what happens. I feel like I was able to learn so much from people who I just would have never interacted with because people were from, were from different schools uh, and people were in different programs and you know I'd never even been to the Divinity School before so just making that trek was was like a new exciting thing for me but specifically about the program I think the learning that I that I'm leaving with is personally is just like to have those conversations that I haven't been before and to be confident going forward doing that. I really thought it was beautiful when Donna Hicks shared with us in her workshop about the role of dignity and how um, that inherent value and acknowledging that inherent value in others can be this, the inspiration for peace work um, and also how all of the, like, the multitude of effects that can be experienced if one feels that their dignity has been compromised. So I think having that in mind to look for when I'm experiencing conflict and having that question to ask myself, oh, does someone feel like their dignity has been compromised and is that like the root of this problem is a valuable uh, question to be able to ask myself. So I asked Dean Hampton at the end of one of the workshops, what is, or what is one way that two different people can actually get together and listen for peace work? And I was asking about where he came from in Ireland, and he says when two people that were complete opposites, that were both violent, were brought together to talk about not politics, but their family, or simple things like that that are important to them. I think I take that with me from my own organization and how I bring very different people together. And it sort of made me shift it a little bit in asking questions like that. What are fun things you do? What are, what kind of music you like? Well, who's someone you care about in your family? And I think that was a very different way of approaching peace work as opposed to talking about other things like huge structures or politics or political parties. I think a key insight on peace practice is really, you know, I think the most important thing is really having that genuine intention to want to learn about another culture, about another person's point of view, especially when you're dealing 
with conflict or like having some kind of religious tension. And I think that's what I've really learned from hearing the experiences of the professors and the practitioners that we've heard that it success only comes if it's a very genuine, purposeful intention to come to the table and talk about these issues. And you know, you can't have that by just having all your frameworks or by, you know, reading a ton of books, but it really comes from the heart and, and you can see it. The mentorship meeting with Marcel Gange was really meaningful to me because I am personally interested in how personal narrative relates to global leadership. And Marcel Gange was talking about this public narrative, how the story that I tell about myself, that I can relate it to the stories that people tell about themselves. And in that connecting, we create a kind of urgency of now, that urgency to act. And I deeply identified with it. Another thing that was very helpful was bringing so many people that are actually practicing what they're teaching, like the imam and the pastor, when they, went, they came here and gave us the workshop. And just having people that are actually doing this in the real world and sharing them with us, I think it's very, it's give us a lot of hope of knowing that we can do this. I think one of the reasons that I chose this specific leadership program as opposed to other ones is exactly because faith is okay in this program. It's okay for people to talk about their faith and it's okay to explore how that can be a positive force for change. Um, I think professionally understanding who you are is an inherently important part of doing research and so I think in that sense it's making me into a better researcher as well because it's forcing me to say what are my assumptions, where have they come from and also what are the assumptions of the people that I study with and that I work with and perhaps where have those come from. And in addition to that, it's allowed me to say one of those uh, views of the world is faith and um, is religion or is spirituality, which I hadn't um, had as much space to consider in my graduate training uh, until this point. Thinking about what religion might offer, I, I tend to think in these sort of everyday aspects of human relations where um, some, some of the lessons we can learn from religious traditions or cultural traditions, spiritual traditions, uh, might teach us something about, for example, humility, uh, to, to remain curious, to learn from the experience of others, to be patient, to uh, how to respond to feelings like anger or resentment, um, and how to transform that into uh, healing or more towards justice. I think when I think about sustainable peace in our world right now, in particular in our communities right now, I think a lot about how we need to learn to talk to other people because I feel like if we keep talking to the same people who have the same ideas as us, we kind of talk into preaching to the choir basically by keeping those conversations only amongst people who agree with you, even though I feel like it's more comfortable at first, it's dangerous because then those ideas don't spread. I think bringing people together is essential to doing pretty much anything. And uh, so it's even more essential, I think, when you're thinking about a conflict or injustice or wrongdoing. Um, a sole singular approach, both in terms of one person or one discipline or one solution, won't get us anywhere and I think everything exciting happens at the boundaries. We need to consider the spiritual dimension because at least speaking from my own experience for me that helps me stay grounded and for me that drawing upon those sort of inner resources is a way that you build resilience and you're able to work through all the challenges that you're going to face every day. Um, and it also kind of keeps you focused on whatever your priorities are because it will always remind you what you were called to do um, and not get caught up in sort of the bureaucratic elements of it or all the sort of obstacles day to day that might wear you down.
in this particular series we had really great mentors come and talk to us from different walks of life about their various experiences and uh, essentially they all said the same thing but in their own very different way so to hear that same amazing thing being said in different languages and different form starts to stir something and churn something and makes you recollect that primordial thesis that sometimes slips away into the session so you get reminded about the things that you truly believe in which allows you to focus on your purpose and what you actually want to be doing leadership is about understanding that there are different ways of seeing and knowing within the system and they're all teaching you different things at different times as a result of taking the course i have grown a lot intellectually spiritually and psychologically because hearing those personal narratives from people it was deeply invigorating to me i think when it comes to peace practice and leadership uh, this series has really pushed me to think about the connection between public health which is what i do and peace and really pushed me to re-examine what some of those connections are and i think that's a conversation that i don't get to have very often with myself or with my colleagues um the goals of public health are extensive and peace maybe it's an implicit goal but it's perhaps not a central one and so it's been really instructive in that sense for me to say actually public health work is an incredibly important part of peace building and i think it's incredibly powerful to maybe be a little bit more explicit and introspective about what of what some of those connections are one way that i'm approaching things a little bit differently now having participated in the series is just acknowledging that spending time on cultivating inner peace is essential to working for peace in other arenas of my life so one of the assignments for the spiritual formation series was to do a daily meditation and i can't tell you how long i've tried to get myself to do that and without success but having this kind of external motivator to want to get the most out of the series has pushed me to finally make that time and i think recognizing sort of the focus and the drive that can come from that practice is something that i'll keep in mind uh, when pursuing new projects in the future from this series i've come to uh, appreciate the uh importance of community and uh what a great resource it is and the journey of a leader uh journey of a leader is not a solitary uh journey but um it's a journey where um there are so many other so many people involved on that path and uh it's about this learning process um where there is this two way learning going on um just as much as you are becoming you are an example to others others are example uh to you my experience in the rpp session has contributed to my growth as a spiritual leader or um peace practitioner in the sense that i think that as i continue to teach or facilitate uh projects with communities i will really be listening i think in a much deeper way uh to each individual's wisdom and uh and contribution on a moment to moment basis When working with women and working with most at risk populations who have traditionally been marginalized their voices haven't necessarily been listened to or respected or included in the discussion. So from this series I know that I will take with me particularly um with these populations the ability to um whole difference to be challenged by it really being able to integrate what i hear from these um from these various populations and integrate it into um strategies and programming 
preparing to return um, to the field of education, um, and I'm looking at a variety of independent schools. I've already been, you know, discussing the potential for instituting similar programs um, to the spiritual formation and transformative leadership at the high school level, and so far the feedback has been very positive. It seems like it's something that many schools would be interested in, um, especially the aspect of not just learning about another tradition and that kind of personal element of learning from another tradition I think is something that's missing um, in interfaith work at the high school level. So that would be something I would love to pursue. So um, I come from Malaysia, which is very multicultural and multi-religious. And I previously worked in the Ministry of Education where I worked um, on a program to increase, um, inculcate unity among teachers and students in school. Um, you know, in my role as, as a policymaker and education policy, how do I incorporate the values that are very important to me, the spiritual and religious value? How do I take that and put it into the work that I do? And what are the kind of considerations I need to take into account um, when we're thinking about, you know, an overall policy for, for diversity or for unity um, for the entire country? I'm trying to think about different perspectives to help inform decision making. I envision drawing upon what I've gained in this series in my everyday efforts with my church congregation that I lead in, helping empower young women. I am the president of the Young Women Organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Cambridge. And so I'm working with 12 to 17 year olds who are in living in a troubled world, going to school, having a lot of problems and needing to learn to listen to people and communicate with them and to find this truth that I talked about in all of their conversations and learn how to bring a peaceful presence. So I think that I'll be able to help convey what I've learned in this series in my calling in my church and in the community throughout my life as I work to facilitate conversations and help people feel safe and valued and important. Allow yourself this space in your graduate education. It will allow you to grow, it will push you, it will connect you with wonderful people who care about social justice, who care about um, both understanding the world, critiquing the world, and changing the world all, all together uh, without believing that it's possible to just do one without doing the other two. Allow yourself to connect with uh, other graduate students from across Harvard and um, allow yourself to meet mentors in a very different space to the way we usually meet very accomplished uh, practitioner, practitioners or policy makers. It was a good way to integrate political work, community work, uh, working for peace, working for justice in I think unique ways that are very important to people all over the world. It gives you a lot of practical things to be able to practice peace in whatever you're doing. It's, if it's health, if it's uh, being a teacher, if it's being a lawyer, whatever you're doing, it gives you a lot of key, key things to work with for you be a peace practitioner in your own environment. If someone came to me and they were thinking about taking the spiritual formation series, I think the key thing that I would really want to tell them is that it's a time to uh, sit and reflect in community on uh, things that you don't get the opportunity to in other contexts here at Harvard and with people who are prepared to open up about their own um, vulnerabilities and practices and wisdom uh, and that it's a time to come together and, and share that and also offer, uh, offer support to one another. Someone who's considering it, I would say um, to, to definitely consider applying. Like, I mean, if you're considering it at all, that means that you're engaged in these types of questions and you're passionate about these types of issues and you want to improve your skills. And it's just been so helpful to be able to meet people from other fields. Like, I just 
like especially thinking of like the way like space can be designed to encourage or cultivate peace like that's a question that I just hadn't thought of and I think that actually meeting someone who's dedicated to that work face to face and like getting to have them explain why it's meaningful or what led to that project is so much more powerful than if it was like in an article for class you know what I mean so I feel like that face to face sort of soul to soul connection that this you know type of program allows or offers is just so unique. If I was to speak with someone considering participating in the series, I would tell them that this has essentially been the capstone of my MTS experience at Harvard Divinity School. Um, I was drawn to Harvard because of this idea that it was a really pluralistic and engaged community, and I think it definitely is, but you need to take the step to engage in those activities. Um, and this series has been the clearest example of where I've seen that happening at the school.